What's going on guys? So if you're watching this video, that probably means you're part of the giant cultural phenomenon that is Pokemon Go right now. Well today, I'm gonna to show you how to mix two amazing things. Pokemon Go and motorcycles. So the question is why motorcycles? Well, on top of the fact that motorcycles are generally better than cars and more fun to ride, they are also more maneuverable and able to get into areas that you wouldn't be able to with a car. Ain't nothing stopping me from getting to my pokey stops. So what do you need? Well, there's a couple options depending on how long you want to be out catching them all. First off, you're gonna need a bike. No, not Ash's kind of bike. A motorcycle kind of bike, but not a sport bike. You're gonna need a supermoto. The reason you need this kind of bike is because with a supermoto, you aren't just stuck on the road. You can take this thing through parking lots, down dirt trails, over sidewalks, because we all know Pokemon ain't just chilling on the road. All right, so next you're gonna need some gear. At minimum, here's what you need. You need a RAM mount to hold your phone to your motorcycle. You need a phone to play on. An external battery, because we know what Pokemon Go does to your phone battery. Thin motorcycle gloves or tech-specific gloves that you can use with your phone. A charging cable, earbuds, and a backpack to hold everything in. Oh, and sunscreen because we nerds tend to be kind of pale. All right, so those items will get you started, but what if you really want to do like the song and catch them all? Not just some of them. You're gonna need a couple more items. To upgrade, you're gonna need a second battery pack and a solar charger. Oh, and bring some water with this pack because you might be out for a while. Okay, now before you go wild doing wheelies and catching Pokemon, you have to be safe doing this. Wear your riding gear and don't be stupid and play this game while riding on the road or around people. Too many people have been idiots playing this game. Please don't be one of them. All right, getting into it. First off, you're gonna need your phone on your bike. When placing the phone in the RAM mount, make sure to place it so that it's kind of upright. This way, when a Pokemon shows up, you can move your handlebars back and forth to aim the phone at a Pokemon and you don't have to constantly take the phone out of the holder. Also, before placing the phone in the holder, we're going to position the external battery into the phone holder. This is the external battery I recommend. Its size is perfect to go underneath the phone in the holder, and it also packs plenty of juice to get your phone up to 100%. Alright, now remember the backpack and the solar charger? This is where you're going to have it on your backpack, charging your second battery while you ride, so that when your first battery dies, you switch it out and let it charge while your new battery is being used with your phone. Using this method and switching between the battery packs should give you all day battery life. Now as far as playing while on the bike goes, this is where you have two options. First is when you use the bike to travel from Pokestop to Pokestop collecting items. Having a small bike like this makes it easy to get to any Pokestop regardless of where it is because you can easily maneuver through parking lots, over sidewalks, or wherever you need to get to in order to get to the Pokestop. The second option is to use it to find rare Pokemon. This is where the headphones are going to come in handy. I personally use a Bluetooth system in my helmet to hear my phone, but earbuds work just fine as well. With the game pulled up, you're going to pull up the nearby Pokemon screen. While you're riding down the road and you stop at a red light or a stop sign, glance down and see what Pokemon are near you. This is by far the best way to find rare Pokemon because you'll be covering a large area. If you hear this noise, or if you see a rare silhouette of a Pokemon you want, simply pull off the road away from traffic and people, and slowly ride around until the specific Pokemon you want shows up. This is where being on a supermoto really helps out. If you're in the wrong parking lot, or you need to jump a curve, it's not a problem with this kind of bike. I will stress that you shouldn't be looking at your phone or the nearby Pokemon screen while you're riding. Also, when you're slowly riding around parking lots, make sure you're going slow enough so that your distance counts towards your eggs hatching. If you go too fast, your distance doesn't count. So guys, hopefully this video helps you play Pokemon Go and ride motorcycles at the same time. If you guys have any strategies for Pokemon Go, please leave them in the comments below because I'm going to read every single one of those things. And make sure to send this video to one of your friends that you know plays Pokemon Go and rides, so that way you guys can ride and play at the same time. I'm Chase on Two Wheels, and I gotta run because I think I just saw a Snorlax laying on the road down the street. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.